In my last video I presented the concept of the world clock, worked on its design and also created main algorithm behind it. I was to publish the second part of this video a few days back. Sorry for this short delay. And now it's time to put the words where your time is. Here's the part of the front panel which I printed in the previous video. We need three more parts like that. Let's turn them around. I printed these connectors to join all four parts together. Sorted. Now that it is done, we can start working on a diffusion panel. It will provide white fronts for letter cutouts, as well as isolate light emitted by each LED so it lets just one letter. Here is the Tinkercut design. The printout of each part takes approximately 3 hours, so I need in excess of 12 hours to print the whole diffusion panel. Each front panel part would have its dedicated diffusion panel. Let's put it all together now. All parts fit perfectly. When I put the front panel against the light, you would see that all letters are nicely lit. With this out of the way, we can create the LED matrix. I cut out the piece of fiberboard that has the same size as the inside of the frame. I marked on it the rough places where the LEDs would be positioned. I did this using the box cutter marking the outline of the letters through the front panel. The LED strip I would use is 5 volts VS2811 LED strip. It allows to control the state and color of each LED individually. I cut it into strips containing 8 LEDs each. Then I soldered them together to form 8x8 matrix. That was a fair amount of work. It is finally ready. Time to connect it to Arduino. So first we connect LED strip ground and 5 volts to Arduino ground and 5 volts and then LED strip signal pin goes via 220 ohm resistor to digital Arduino pin 5. In a normal circumstances, you would need an external power supply to lit the LEDs. Every single LED, assuming it is set to white, with max brightness requires 60 mA of current. So if we want to lit all 64 LEDs white, then they would draw more than 3.8 amps of current. So even the generic power adapter cable I have, providing max 2 amps of current, would not be sufficient. You can draw maximum 500 milliamps of current from Arduino, so that seems definitely not sufficient. But let's look at the worst case scenario. The word representation of time that needs the most number of LEDs lit is 25 past 12. That is 20 LEDs to be exact. So 20 LEDs lit in white would require 1.2 amps of current. Seems too much. But since we are not at full brightness and we use different colors, I think this is going to work with LEDs being powered from Arduino.
I wrote a simple sketch to test the connectivity and if all LEDs are working ok. This also tests the colors I plan to use in the final product. When I put the front panel on top of the matrix you can see that all letters are nicely lit and light from each LED is properly isolated to lit just the corresponding letter. So now let's look at connecting all the components. Let's start with connecting Arduino 5 volts to LED 5 volt pin and RTC module VCC pin. Then we connect all the grounds. Next we connect LED strip signal pin to Arduino digital pin 5 through 220 ohm resistor. The RTC module I am using is DS3231 which is the I2C device, so we connect clock pin to analog pin A5 and data pin to analog pin A4. So this is the setup I use for this project. If you however create a larger work clock or plan to let more than 20 LEDs at a time or even have 12 volt LED strip, then the connectivity should look like this. Disconnect 5 volts and ground of LED strip from Arduino and connect it to external power supply. Then connect power supply ground to Arduino ground and power Arduino by connecting positive of the power supply to Arduino 5V pin. I originally tried to connect it to the VIN pin, but 5V was not enough. The VIN pin requires voltage that is anything between 6 and 12 volts. When you are powering 12V LED strip and using 12V power supply, then you have to connect positive of the power supply to VIN pin. Connecting it to 5V pin would destroy the board. Now let's put in the front panel, the fusion panels and LED matrix into the frame and connect LED strips and RTC module to Arduino as per schematics we just went through. We no longer work with the breadboard, so I created the screw terminal part that allows multiple 5 volts and ground connections. Now let's look at the code. So in the last video we created the sketch that was creating word representation of time but rather than controlling LEDs it was outputting appropriate strings to the serial monitor. Here is the declaration section from that code. Let's add fast LED components to it. We need fast LED library. Then we have several values needed to declare LED strip. Like the pin to which LED strip is connected, brightness, LED type etc. Then we declare the table of 64 LEDs. Each entry provides color details for the corresponding LED. I also added the pointer table just like current timetable that would store previously read time so it can be compared with new reading and allow us to redisplay time only upon time change. And lastly we have three variables that store pointers to colors of minutes, past two and hour components. They point to colors table that stores 11 colors I selected for this project. You may remember the table I used in my last video which stored all possible words that can be used when displaying time and can be found in a letter matrix. Now we need to change those strings into LED assignments. Each LED has an index assigned. So let's take the word 11 as an example. To display it, we need to lit LEDs with following indexes and that information is available in the appropriate row or the time comp table. Value 99 indicates that this table cell is obsolete as we only need 6 LEDs to display word 11. In setup function we add LED strip initialization and set up LED strip brightness. In my last video, in loop function, we created the code that was heart and soul of the world clock. This code was reading time of RTC module and filling in the current timetable with pointers to appropriate LED assignment. 
In the beginning, we add few lines to say the previously read time to previous timetable just before we read the time of RTC module. After reading time and filling in the current timetable, with up-to-date information we can check if minutes components have changed which would indicate the change of time. If they did, we assign black color to the LEDs belonging to the previous time, which would turn them off next time we run command fast LED show. Then we use random function to select the color in which minutes would be displayed. And when done, we assign the color to LEDs that correspond to the current minute. Again, the change is not immediately visible without running the command fast LED show. Then we generate the color for the pass to component. We make sure that we keep generating this color until we get the value that is different to the color we just picked for the minutes component. We set that color to all relevant LEDs. We repeat those actions for an hour component, also getting the unique color and updating table for relevant LEDs. Finally, we run fast LED show command to lit LEDs as defined in LEDs table. Let's load the sketch to Arduino to see if it works. Great stuff, it works. In most projects it takes sometimes dozens of attempts before everything works as expected. Here I got it pretty much right away. But looking at the time transition, I think we can make it look cooler. What if the LEDs showing old time would fade out and then LEDs showing new time would gradually light up? This is fairly easy to program. We need to write two short functions, dim all would fade all the LEDs. We have a loop where we gradually decrease the brightness value and each time we change it, we run the fast LED show command to reflect that change in the matrix. Lit all does the same thing, but it increases the brightness value from 0 to 80. Somehow the eye register the process of LEDs getting brighter differently, so I slightly changed the way I use delay function to make the transition smoother. The process would look more or less like this. Here are the changes we would require to make in the main code to introduce this fade in and light up effect. Here we would add a dim all function, then wait for 2 seconds. We need to replace fuzz LED show function with lit all function. Let's reload the code and see the result. Looks fantastic! To make sure the code is 100% bulletproof, we need to sit through all possible transitions within an hour to see if there are no hiccups in the code. I am super happy with this project. It is by no means finished. I still need to add time setup functionality. I may also add photoresistor so the brightness of LEDs would automatically adjust to the light intensity around. All transitions were correct. This is the end of this project. As always, like, share and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video.